So we have Z Zero right. Twenty One, Condromic, Soydu, and DJ Blade Runner. And that is bulletproof. Over on the other side, we have. Let's see if I can set this up again. Because that was a Schmexy's camera angle. Uh oh. We have. Oh, wait. We have. Zandres. I don't know how to pronounce it. I didn't get the name walkthrough like Honey does, so I might butcher some names. <laughs> I'm just gonna call him Andre, because it's easy. Jorkuli, Cage, and all the way over here in the corner, Tonberry Master. I think he's hiding from me. Didn't do that. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so when the match starts, type in uh, do that or should I do that now? I think when the match starts. I don't know if it works beforehand, so. Alright. Yeah. Um, yeah, just don't forget you can also break blocks and chests and everything. Yep. Yep. So be careful that. And so you can don't write. Do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> and you can right click on people to see the inventory, or you yes, can do sir. slash vi space their name. Yep. And uh, will I get the feather or sh and the compass or should yeah, I put that in my? It'll, it'll right. give it to you. Yeah. All right, awesome. Contra not. Aloha, buddy. Welcome to my first race for wool stream. <laughs> see how it goes. Let me know, obviously, how I'm doing. Yell at me if I'm doing anything wrong. Like, you know. Things. Alright, cool. You are ready? I am ready. Awesome. Yeah. Alright, so obviously, in the beginning of the match, we're gonna see a rush to get some supplies, get some. Uh, blocks and get over that little tiny gap. It's not quite as big of a gap as some other race rule maps. It'll be interesting to see how teams deal with it and the other team. And get first to wait. All right, streamer mode. Woohoo! This is where uh, some of the PvP players get to kind of show off their skills. First couple minutes of the match, everyone's relatively weak. There's not a lot, there's no armor really, and uh, some solid PvPers at the beginning of a match. And the boost. Okay, that was pretty cool. Uh, Tuss, I believe, yeah, Tuss is on left. There's Bulletproof on left, I'm sorry. Bulletproof on, Bulletproof Bulletproof on left. Yeah, yeah Bulletproof on left. Punch one of their members across that little short gap. So they're going to be sending someone, looks like Khan, all the way down across that volcano, I'm assuming the third. And in the meantime, both teams have managed to cross the gap. One member from each team down the supply area, obviously. So they'll be running those supplies, getting getting the armor, getting the gear. And uh, TNT supplies, I believe, are down there as well. Some TNT supplies, so be interesting yeah. to see how teams handle that. Uh, two members from each team blitzing down the blitzing down the uh, lane here. Let's check in with Khan over in Bulletproof. He's grabbing the level two team box. He's gonna gear up and he just lighting up the lane. Unfortunately, he didn't have torches to get the rest of the lane. He just come get this light area, but I guess his teammate DJ is falling behind him to light up where he missed. So that's always good. Bunch of death coming in from <laughs> Tess, which is never good to see. And immediately, it looks like Khan is going for this third wall. He has the gear and the same thing blocks he has. Uh, do you know a rough estimation of how many blocks you need to do this? Is a stack sufficient? I believe a stack is enough to get down into the wall box. Um, getting out is another question. Gotcha. So it'll be interesting. We'll check in with him in a little bit. Uh, we have some PUPers coming down lane to find each other. Looks like Jorah might be coming down to contest and possibly slow down Khan from getting this wall because getting third this early in the game could be huge for them. Uh, looks like, I don't know where he, oh, he actually jumped down to third himself, but was shot by DJ, so they have complete control over that kind of la end area of the lane, and they have two members to support Khan while he runs that wall, so might be able to do that uncontested for, for fairly in the beginning of the match. It looks like Tuss was a little slowed down in the beginning, uh, I think Bulletproof had one peer peer kind of hang back and take care of those guys they were trying to spawn, so definitely slowing down Tuss and their plan. Uh, Ritual and ritual things like that can happen where you kind of get that hitch in your plan, and uh, you know it kind of throws everything apart. But a good ritual team knows how to adapt and respond to things such as that happening, and we'll see how both teams kind of handle that as the match progresses. So right now, let's do a little check-in. Jor just crossing over that second wall, going to support third. It looks like uh, just bulletproof have a bunch of members down here, but Tus have just just so you do to hold them. Hold him back. And he's doing a decent job. Gets Draculi there. And then let's check him with Khan. See how far he's gotten. That's Tom Bear. That's Andres. That's just TP. Khan is at the level 3 boombox. Which is obviously the most important chest in the game. And okay. So very interesting. He's actually using the note, box, uh, the note blocks provided in that chest to bridge to the wall. 
So I guess 64 glass was sufficient to make there, and he gets there a whole stack of note blocks. So that'll most likely be enough for him to get to this war room and back up, I'm presuming, uh, considering he also has 20 something glass to left over. Uh, it doesn't look like any team or either of the teams have breached second wall yet or to get to those cannon supplies. I would have figured there would have been a little rush for those, but it seems like both teams have decided to kind of ignore those for now. And I haven't seen... Okay, it looks like Tusk has entered into first wall. It's that PvP wall, which looks just absolutely treacherous. Um, obviously, as we mentioned, or as was mentioned in the map tour, the problem with first uh, in this map is as you're going, it's tiered. Oh, and Cage destroyed in the first room with all his gear right there, so that's not, that's not good, but we shall see. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a good start, uh, as it looks like, without any major interruptions, Bulletproof will be able to get to the third wall, obviously he still has to get back up and out, but they have complete control of that lane down there, so you do holding them back at the, uh, at the end of second wall, at the end of that volcano, but Tomberry here, inside second, so do has spotted them, and We'll try and be trying his best to keep him off from that wall or those TNT spies, as those are pretty huge. Let's check in with this TNT spies, which is what I'm assuming he's going after. Is this level 2 boom box, which has plentiful TNT supplies in it. Uh, buttons, TNT, ladders, and the like. All the stuff we need to cause some damage on the other side of the lane, of course. Uh, now, Bulletproof also has DJ and Soydu down here as well. It looks like Soydu might rotate and keep an eye on that second wall while DJ is here. Khan finally gets to that third wall, and now he begins the slow, I'm assuming, dis uh, ascent back up to get back in the lane. Interesting how we had this huge safe platform here. It looks like he's building camp. Uh, this might be to prevent him getting shot off by any air fire or some unexpected skeletons, but it seems like a lot of blocks used for something that may not be necessary, considering he actually has zero blocks left. But they have a pass around chest placed, and it looks like they will just be telling down to grab that. I wonder if he'll be committing suicide uh, to get back into the match, or if he'll be camping out here, which could be actually really a really interesting yeah. strategy. He has a lockdown down there. That's That could be what they're going after. And actually, now, the more I think about it, that's a great idea, because he's a perfect spot to slow down anyone trying to jump down those pads. And with that wall quote-unquote secured now in that pass round, uh, that's, they're in a pretty decent situation. Uh, of course, they'll be able to get some gear. Let's check them with first resources. We haven't been able to. I haven't gotten over here yet. It looks like Bulletproof built a lava cannon and actually managed to hit all of the diamonds on Tuss's side. Um, Tuss may have been able to get them and get them out, but considering the cannon shell and the carnage on Tuss's side, I'm going to imagine their diamonds are gone. So, Bulletproof showing that they had the first couple minutes of this match real set and, st and steady and uh, well practiced, it seems, so far, because they're doing really well. It's easy here uh, doing their supplies, and it looks like he's setting up another cannon. Let's keep an eye on this. Cannons are always fun, no matter who you ask. Unless you're the he's guy getting hit in the face. It's just taking out their diamonds and their enchanting table. Oh, he had both. Okay. Up. Wow. Yeah, he's got them both, so he's lava cannoned. And I believe a dry cannon for the uh, enchanting table. Very cool. A complete denial here. And misses. Okay, so. He's showing why he should stick the bows. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's check it. Looks like uh, Tuss has one member in this first wall. Actually, he's escaping from first wall right now, it looks like. Looks like he just got all supplies and is trying to survive as long as possible. Uh, this just. It'll be interesting, obviously, with Bulletproof having their diamonds secured and things and such as that, uh, they will have an easier time getting through that first wall, but from what I've been told, it's still relatively difficult. I mean, I've, he I've heard you can run it in this gold armor that's provided to you at the checkpoints by if you're good, but having that having those diamonds secured will definitely be a great boon for Bulletproof moving on in this match. I don't think Bulletproof, ha Bulletproof have managed to get any players, any of their players, down lane past this second wall, really. It uh, looks like Andre is tunneling to something. Just curious what he's tunneling to. Did you offer any there's insight not, into what he's doing? There's not much down there. <laughs> I believe the only reason I could think of is to stop a third. Someone running third, but there's no one down there. I guess for, except Con, who's just locking down, but it's the only thing I could think of. I was thinking cannon, but he has absolutely no supplies. He has <laughs> axes, a wooden pick, and a bow. Uh, so, we'll, we'll check back on in 
on him once he decides to stop uh, tolerating. Unless he's going to get just to escape bow fire, but that's quite the ways away to just escape some bows. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty ambitious. It looks like DJ did set something up with a water wall here. I'm unsure as to what it was, unless this was just kind of him leaking water on accident. He, oh, yeah, he's he setting up a cannon. Up the sources, yeah, yeah, and it all updated. He's setting up a cannon here. Ooh. Three stage. So, it does look like Tusk actually managed to get a member all the way down here in this third wall, and they're at the, at the level 3 boombox. It's a really creative cannon coming in from DJ trying to hit that. But that is such a long drop, and he needs to get real lucky with that secondary blast or the timing to do this well. If he was able to pull this off, though, that's a pretty godly TNT uh, cannon, cannon yeah. shot there. That cannon is possible to hit that directly onto that platform, so. I can imagine. Hopefully, something interesting will happen. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. See, get give him one or two more chances, and then I think we'll go check in on something else real quick. We got ZZ coming out of resources now. He's at the uh, house Ooh. right before the uh, volcano. So actually, it looks like just real quick. It looks like Andre was digging down to meet that pass around for third wall, but unfortunately, their teammate is locked down here by can by an imposing cannon and a fully decked out con in third wall. And it, oh, okay, so Andre is coming down to provide some support. Maybe he will be able to bow down Khan. And uh, as we're coming upon first nightfall relatively soon, I don't believe Khan has a bed set or a bed two set. So if he dies, that's uh. Oh, Andre is taken out immediately as he was naked. Um, but coming up on the first night, we'll see where people decide to set their beds and then how that kind of changes changes the mentality of how teams go about what they're doing. People are a little less afraid to die because they know they'll be able to respawn quickly and in more convenient locations. Uh, Tom Berry here back in second wall. I don't know where it's. So I do has decided to stop paying attention to him for a little bit, give him a little freedom, and he's going to be going towards those TNT supplies, I'm assuming. Uh, he's electing to go for the safe way. It's, I know there's a method where you can kind of parkour, if that block was in the way, you kind of, or if I'm just not bad, you land the spawner, jump to the side, and then kind of parkour your way over there, just dealing with the occasional creeper, and uh, free access to the TNT supplies, which are no longer there. Okay. So, either Bulletproof Cannon that, or Tuss has salvaged everything they could out of that chest in that little area, but I don't believe they have. So, that is a big, sh a big shot. A yeah, I just don't see where they would have cannoned from, because I don't even know if Bulletproof, Bulletproof haven't touched their boombox, so... Interesting. Yeah, it's a, the cannon supplies chest on top of the big autumn tree. They could have used that oh, too. okay. And right generally, a dry cannon on top of the subsidian would... Maybe possible to hit yeah, down there. Very good point. So as yeah, it looks like the uh, level one boom box up on top of the tree is empty, and they've started canning into this big ass tree, but uh, they had they didn't manage to hit any chests, unfortunately. So I'm assuming that was their target, but they decided to change targets and go for that guy down by third. And uh, I do believe he was taken out. He is dead. The cause unknown. But you might have picked the wrong record to play. I believe <laughs> Khan's record is uh, won the battle. Uh, right. Khan turning into a very angry father who doesn't like his son's taste in music and decides to <laughs> murder his son. And Zizi's got enchanting now. He's in full enchanted iron. And DJ in full diamond going to the second wall. He does decide. He does make the decision to obsidianize portion of that lava. Which, uh, as we know, will start to activate those spawners because the lava will be providing that light source to stop them from spawning anything. But uh, as he's in full diamond, I'm sure he's relatively confident running this, especially even with mobs. Uh, he's going to have a few spiders and some creepers, but nothing an iron sword and diamond armor won't be able to take care of. Unfortunately for Tusk, they don't have anyone here to stop him at the time, at the moment. Khan just kind of farming that wall. Not really sure what he's doing. I think he just likes touching it. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Tom Berry. Blown by Creeper. So it's easy. Yeah. Fully enchanted and set up, and he's making his way to first wall. So we'll see Bulletproof starting to attack that. They have members. They're going to have members in full diamond in first and second. Uh, I'm going to assume DJ's making great progress on second, as it's not mainly a PvP wall, whereas first is. And we also have Cage over here for Tuss in first wall as well, but he is in significantly less armor. So uh, we'll see the race between... 
Cage and ZZ at the moment. ZZ very much outgearing him, but we'll see how Cage managed to, manages to fare. Now let's check in with DJ to see how far he's gotten. I'm assuming, yeah, he goes. He just decides to just obsidianize. Couple. Yeah, he decides to obsidianize all that. He can deal with the mobs. He's strong. He's powerful. He knows it, and he's just running away with that wool. And uh, without any unforeseen interruptions, that should be second wool in the clear for uh, bulletproof there. So that's third and second. I don't. Believe, I don't know if they've gotten the pass around for third yet, but it is there and cons there to prevent anyone from stopping that. Dracooli down from Tuss to meet him, but he's back in the same spot that, um, who was down here before? Tom Green? Or who got sacked down here? Was it Dracooli uh, before Dracooli, as well? Yeah. yeah. Yep. He's back in the same hidey hole he was before, and Khan's still on the same platform he was using before, so <laughs> Dracooli, yeah. blame me on the record. Uh, judging from the cobblestone near the pass around at third, I believe Bulletproof just got the pass around. I believe it was Soyuju picked it up. Alrighty. So yeah, I believe they have third nice and safe now. So basically, ZZ, once ZZ gets out to first, we're going to see that victory monument run. ZZ actually managing to do some PvP while he's running first walls. So he takes the time to stop, slow down, turn around, kill a cage, and go back to doing what he was doing. Cold hearted. That's what I say. But that's what it takes to compete in our first wall here. Especially on a map like this, where it's relatively, uh, or at least from what I can tell, it's pretty highly PvP based with having. First wall pretty open to PvP, and second wall being a very open to PvP, and third also very easily stopped with PvP. So uh, strong PvP teams, I think, will be able to kind of showcase their talents on a map such as this. And I think that's what we're seeing. Bulletproof did have a great start and really started off on the right foot. They managed to shut down a lot of what Tess was planning on doing, which I'm assuming was you know resources, getting the third quickly. And I guess that lockdown right in the first couple minutes is what in Race for World can win games, and it has several times before, and I'm sure it will continue to in this tournament, as it's just kind of a rerun theme that happens in Race for World matches, it seems. Those first couple minutes are so vital to how teams do in the future of the match, but that does not mean comebacks are not, not uh, impossible, but just very difficult, depending on the map. Looks like ZZ backed off a little bit, he's going to regen, and then he's going to go head back down. Maybe cancel some spawns, or maybe just get some resources back in them. Let's check in with how everyone else is doing. DJ looks like he's beating that safe staircase up to the monument with Soyadu. And they have the blocks, and there's no one here to stop them, so I'm assuming that'll be done relatively quickly. Dracooli is still stuck down here in third, trying to deal with Khan. But as we see here, Khan does have his bed set, so even if he does kill him, Jorah's going to be able to get very little progression before Khan is back and nipping at his, nipping at his heels as they say. Let's see, Tom Barry looks like he's getting some wood for who knows what, but that is of course not the ideal situation to be in this late in the game. Cage oh, running first easy. is taken out, and ZZ dies as well, which let's go check in and see how far he managed to make it. Let's see if we can find his gubbins. Let's see, so managed to make it down the first staircase. Oh, and right at this kind of intersection where he turned the corner of this long hallway where he was kind of... St oh, this is where Cage died. I'm on the wrong side. Cage died in the that area. And the exact same spot. All right, so... That corner really proven to be quite the problem for both teams and nearly simultaneously, so that was interesting. And ZZ dies on his way back in. Now, he does have five minutes to get back to this stuff, so I'm assuming it won't be a problem as he lit up the majority of this cave and was taking out spawners on his way. So getting back to this stuff should not be a problem, but I do not know where his bed is set. <laughs> So he might have a little bit of problems. Uh, yeah, it sounds like he's couple. having a lot of problems. Okay, yeah, so he doesn't have a bed set and has to run through this uh, very much not lit up spawn with uh Ooh, I think his bed got blown up. Ah, I see. There's definitely a lot of snowballs lying around. Now this is interesting. This is an opportunity that Tuss, if spotted, could take advantage of. Possibly shutting down this runner from getting through first, which would be ZZ. And if they shut him down for those five minutes, that's a lot of gear out of the way. Uh, I'm not sure if they re recognize what's happening, or if they know what's happening, or if they're in the position to do that. But it's definitely an option, and could be really powerful if pulled off really well. As the uh, sun is rising on the second day on this map, we're going to see players locked into their beds. So wherever their beds are now, they better hope they're safe for the rest of the day. Because they will not be able to set their beds for the 10 minutes. And uh, in risk rule speak, that is a, light, a lot of time. 
because a lot of things can happen in 10 minutes. Uh, Cage getting taken out again. We got DJ coming in to help ZZ out now. Full diamonds. Oh, okay. Just... Helping him get back to his stuff, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Just a little moral support, cheering behind ZZ. Hey, you can do it. And ZZ got back. Uh, he did <laughs> get the uh, checkpoint gear just to help him a little bit. I guess he was a little nervous about losing that gear, getting to that five minute mark. But he's back. Cage is back as well. But uh, it doesn't look like Cage is nearly as ready to face this dungeon as ZZ and DJ are as a team. Because as a team, they'll probably just blitz right through this. Um, especially being told that the PvE could be run in that gold armor having two full diamonds and DJ just runs across sprints across this room and runs into the worm this mouth is messing me up and he blocked me off how rude <laughs> but uh, a creeper says I'm not having none of that I don't care what mouth you got I'm coming right through so DJ does really there we go okay he just has deal with the spider is easy here to support him he's grabbing the spawners and as long as they don't take a look at any of these endermen that is gonna be third wall on its way out. Oh, third wall, I'm sorry. The third wall, but uh, first wall on the map. And that'll be the third wall for Bulletproof on the way out of this dungeon. It looks like uh, DJ just kind of left CC the rot down there, but hey. <laughs> CC died by an enderman, and uh, you know what? Sacrifices must yeah, be made. Yeah, listen. This is a competitive environment, and uh, sometimes you come before your teammates. I know it sounds harsh, but you gotta win. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bulletproof does have a secure staircase up to this monument. Um, so, unless some tragedy like a tidal wave or a volcano were to, you know, come upon this team, looks like they'll be having this in the back. Now it's just a matter of time to when they get up this mountain. DJ coming up with the first wall. I would imagine that they're holding off on placing the walls until they have all of them. Although, sorry, it doesn't have any. Interesting Think. to see who's holding all, holding all the walls here. There's in the chest. The DJ drops them in the chest. There's lime wall, yellow wall, and orange wall. So Good <laughs> lazy. <laughs> 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 good game, and that is the match to bulletproof. So very good game, and uh, that is the first round. The unambiguous subs put up a good try, but. You know what, Bulletproof just had the, this map stratted really well, and they executed really well. Their PvP seemed to shut down uh, Tusk in the beginning, and Tusk just couldn't come back from that, especially with Bulletproof in such the advantage that they were. Uh, Tusk just found it kind of hard to make any grounds on the map, and Bulletproof just kind of ran through everything they needed to run through, supported each other as teammates, and played really well, and earned themselves the win. So, congratulations, round one, to Bulletproof. Uh, um, do you want to do an interview? Sure, who we got for yeah. the interviews? I gotta collect someone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Khan, aloha. Hey. Good hey, game. Parkway. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, let's see who who chairman is. Dragging by the feet, kicking and screaming into the channel to sure from Tusk. I like music. Good Thank game, you. everyone. I, like, I couldn't hear yours. <laughs> oh, should have got closer. I should have, but you wouldn't let me. But who knows? I might have. All right, so good game, guys. Obviously, bulletproof coming out with the win there. You guys played great. Now, I just wanna, the first question I had to think of for uh, Khan here would be: Yeah. Do you guys think? You executed your strategy to the T, because I didn't see any falters in your strategy, really, except for maybe uh, CZ dying. I mean, do you yeah, think this is? CZ was... died a little bit. Yeah. But other than that, it went really well. Like, this is DJ basically a flawless really run. Yeah. That yeah, DJ got a really good run of second. And DJ that third, really that third rush was something great to watch. That was really cool, especially the yeah, utilization yeah, yeah, yeah. of that that boom box. That was pretty that cool. Quickly. Now, uh, Jor, in your opinion, what were you thinking once uh, you saw them in that? Once you saw Khan in that third wall? I mean, we didn't. We, we we kind of were scrambling before the match because the person that was supposed to play went to dinner with his girlfriend. But um, when I saw him there, I was like, eh, whatever. I guess I'll sit here and wait for him to run out of arrows. And Ton said, yeah, I'm pretty much doing the same thing. And Kage was like, I hate mobs. So that was basically our entire <laughs> game right there. All right, so you know, not a lot of thought processing going into it. There is basically just like, well, uh, I saw Andre come down and try to support maybe you know. 
get a couple arrows into Khan, which those kind of little rotations is really cool to watch teams kind of set up and do. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for you guys, but if it did, that would have been really cool. Now, I do have another question. Uh, at one point, did you guys know that ZZ was running first, and did you realize when he died? Did you just sweat that? Oh, yeah, entirely. But there was okay. nothing, we could, do. There was nothing yeah. we could do with that information. <laughs> we were locked down on two other wolves, and Kage was having difficulty with first on his own. Yeah. The I mean, if we could have done something with that, we probably would have been able to execute on it, but there was no there was no chance. Yeah, definitely. I, I said the same thing. I said it might have been an opportunity for you guys, but unfortunately, you just weren't able to capitalize on it. Uh, I do want to say one thing, one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna apologize now because I called Kage Cage the entirety of the match because I was not told otherwise. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we, uh, I mean. We we do occasionally call him the Rage Cage, so it's okay. <laughs> so I'm still like half not wrong. Cause I'm not gonna say right, cause I don't think I was right. But I'm not wrong. <laughs> I mean, technically you were you were wrong, but technically you weren't. So I think it's all good. All right, cool. I like my very vague description of being half not wrong. I like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that about wraps up. Uh, what do you guys think for the future matches for round one? Do you have any advice going to the other teams for how they could prepare a little better for this map? Is there anything you guys notice as you're stratting or during the match that you think some other teams could utilize or could do better? I think you guys uh, want to broadcast publicly to the other teams here? Don't play that map. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Solid kidding. Advice. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, basically, just just practice. There's not yeah. much strategic depth into that map. I mean, we probably could have guessed everything Bulletproof was going to do to a T, and in fact, I nearly did, but it's not. It's all comes down to your execution, so just practice as hard yeah. as you can. Uh, also, be prepared to like not have everything go according to plan. Because that map can have a lot of variance with it. Especially with all the mobs. I think uh, that can definitely yeah. put a hitch in any plan. The one yeah. bad creeper spawn and kind of... Oh, there goes yeah, half our diamonds. Uh oh Especially with your resources, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that about wraps it up. It was a great first match. Uh, my first time streaming Art Race for Wall, and it was a good match to get myself started. So it was a lot of fun to watch. And thank you all for playing. And congratulations to Bulletproof yep. for your first first round win. Yep, good game. Yep, okay. good game, guys.